Legends of unexplainable creatures have permeated the age of man. Some, such as the mermaid and Sasquatch, found depicted within some of the oldest cave paintings on Earth, with many accounts found within New World history made and documented upon differing continents far before either were ever apparently in contact with each other. Accounts of these creatures have continued to surface over the years. The skunk ape, the mothman, along with many others, reportedly encountered by several independent witnesses at the same time, with a number of these experiences even reportedly photographed. These images are now touted as proof of their existence by those who snap them. With the number of reports of apparent cryptids, just within the last few decades alone, being in the thousands. Some of these claims obviously hold more water than others, the Loch Ness Monster being one example, some being so convinced by the purported evidence of its existence, dedicating their entire lives to the pursuit of the creature. Our reasoning behind our decision to investigate this creature, however, is due to the astonishing claims made and seamlessly collaborated with each other regarding an event involving two enormous reptilian-looking birds which swooped down and attempted to snatch a young boy all the way back in July of 1977. On the 25th, a police report was made and a subsequent search for the creature occurred. A mass search, a terrified boy and mother, along with many other witnesses over the coming years, would come forward within the state of Illinois in the U.S., all claiming they had witnessed something many would simply dismiss as impossible if it weren't for the incredible corroboration of the event made by those who witnessed it on that fateful day. A pair of creatures which have now become infamously known as the Thunderbird, a possible breeding pair of living flying dinosaurs, most reminiscent of a pterodactyl targeted 10-year-old Marlon Lowe while he was playing in his backyard in Lawndale. One of the, quote, birds latched onto Marlon and began to take flight with the boy. His mother instinctively took to battling with the creature, managing to rescue her son from its enormous talents. The creatures, reportedly startled with his reaction, then made their escape. The flurry of activity caught the attention of many people nearby who all also claim to have witnessed these creatures making their escape. Reportedly weighing some 50 to 70 pounds, if this Jurassic-sized creature does indeed still exist, it may be due to an enormous cyclical hibernation period. The flying reptiles would, however, have a wingspan many meters in length. So the chances of it going unnoticed for very long, we feel, are near to impossible. Yet, that does not take anything away from these people's claims, testimonies which they have all stuck to, convinced of what they saw, and indeed what Marlin experienced that day in 1977. What do you think regarding the existence of the Thunderbird? Real or just a hoax? We find such claims highly compelling. Julia is the name given to the unknown source of a sound recorded on March 1st, 1999. It was recorded on the Eastern Equatorial Pacific using an autonomous hydrophone array. Heard for many thousands of kilometers, the source of the sound has been largely dismissed as an iceberg running aground somewhere off of Antarctica, its point of origin being somewhere between Bransfield Straits and Cape Adair. What gave this story a rather chilling twist, however, is a classified image which later surfaced, a classified image later redacted, taken by a NASA satellite, which shows something with an enormous shadow within the waters of Cape Adair at the time which, if confirmed as a living animal, would be classified as a sea monster of gigantic proportions. The USA's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short, have captured and subsequently released a number of mysterious sounds of possible underwater monsters over the past few years. The upsweep is an unidentified sound detected on the American NOAA's Equatorial Autonomous Hydrophone Arrays. This sound was present, 
when the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory began recording its sound surveillance system, SOSUS, in August 1991. It consists of a long train of narrow-band upsweeping sounds of several seconds in duration each. The source level was high enough to be recorded throughout the Pacific. The sound appears to be seasonal, generally reaching peaks in spring and autumn, but it is unclear why. The source can be roughly located at 54 degrees south, 140 degrees west, which is near the location of volcanic activity, but the location of the sound remains a mystery. The whistle, recorded in the Mariana Volcanic Arc of the Pacific Ocean, but since it was only recorded on one hydrophone rather than the three required to triangulate a location, it is considered unidentified. Bloop is the name given to an ultra-low frequency and extremely powerful underwater sound, detected by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in 1997. The sound source was roughly triangulated to a remote point in the South Pacific Ocean, west of the southern tip of South America, and the sound was detected several times. According to the NOAA description, it rises infrequently rapidly over a duration of one minute and was of sufficient amplitude to be heard on multiple sensors at a range of over 5,000 kilometers. Dr. Christopher Fox does not believe its origin to be man-made such as a submarine or bomb, nor is it familiar to geological events, such as volcanoes or earthquakes. The audio profile of Bloop does indeed resemble that of a living creature, yet the source is a mystery, both because it is different from any known sounds and because it was several times louder than the loudest ever recorded animal, the blue whale. Slow down is a name given to another mysterious deep sea sound, recorded on May 19, 1997, in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. The name was chosen because the sound slowly decreases in frequency over a duration of seven minutes. It was recorded using an autonomous hydrophone array. The sound has been picked up several times each year since 1997. And finally, the train is the name given to a sound recorded on March 5, 1997, on the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array. The sound rises to a quasi-steady frequency. What is especially interesting about this sound is its origins, which are also within Cape Adair, the same general location as Julia. Could some of these sounds be the mating calls of unknown sea monsters? Maybe one day. We will find out.